when a quadratic equation is graphed, it makes a curve called a parabola. It's like a U-shaped curve. The quadratic equation should be in standard form, just like in the last two sections we've done. And this place where the graph changes direction is called the vertex. The U can open up or it can open down. We'll talk about that more in a minute. So the first thing we want to do when we're graphing is to find the vertex. And there's a formula for that. First we find the x part. It's the opposite of b over 2 times a. And that should look familiar. It's the first part of the quadratic formula. It just doesn't have the plus or minus in the square root. Then we use this x value in the original equation to find our y. And we'll write this answer as a single point. So let's practice this. We want to find the vertex. This is already in standard form. It tells us a is 1, b is 4, and c is negative 4. So our formula says we use x equals the opposite of b over 2 times a. So we'll have 4 in place of b and 1 in place of a. And it gives us negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So this is our x part. So now we go back to this original equation. And every place there's an x, we want to put that negative 2 in. So we'll have, in parentheses, negative 2 squared plus 4, and in parentheses, negative 2 minus 4. If you just get in the habit of always putting a number back in in parentheses, um, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble because you'll get the right answer every time. Uh, we can just do this in our calculator all at once as long as you type it in just like you see it. Parentheses and all. And if you type that all into your calculator, you get negative 8. And this is really a y value. So now we have our x and our y. We write that as a point, x first, y second. And that's our vertex. To graph, we find the vertex, the y-intercept, and then we want to make sure that the graph opens in the right direction. The graph should be symmetric meaning it's the same on the left and the right side. To find the y-intercept, we replace x with 0, we find y, and then we graph this point on the y-axis, because it's a y-intercept. If a is greater than 0 or a is positive, it means it opens up. This means that we have a minimum value at the vertex. If a is less than 0, that means a is negative. It opens down, and it means we have a maximum value at the vertex. So now let's look at this. So here, again, it's in standard form. We know a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 15. First of all, because a is positive, we know that the graph has to open up. So let's find the vertex. We want to do x is equal to the opposite of b over 2 times a. So that would be the opposite of negative 2 over 2 times 1. Opposite of negative 2 is 2, and 2 times 1 is 2, which tells us x is 1. So now we're going to put that 1 back in here to get our y. So we have 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 15. You can do that in your calculator all at once. And you should get minus 16. 
and that gives us a point, 1, negative 16. That point, that vertex point, will be a spot on our graph at 1, negative 16, like right here. So we'll put that right there. The y-intercept, remember, means that we, first of all, we make x equal 0. So we have 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 15. 0 squared is 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0 minus 15. So we just get y is equal to a negative 15. So we'll graph this y-intercept on the y-axis, and we'll put it in purple. It would be like right there. So again, I'm going to transfer it. There's my y-intercept, and here's my vertex. And remember, we found out it opened up. So we can graph this now. This is symmetric, so if I have a spot right here, on the y-axis, the same distance to the right of the vertex, I have to have another graph. So that means my graph would go something like this. The domain is always all real numbers. That's because a domain is the x value, and we can put any x we wanted into that problem. And there's nothing that we can't have. Now the range is the y values. So the y values are whatever y axis would have part of that graph. So the y values, the smallest y value is this negative 16, and it would go up. So that means our range would be a negative 16, it includes that negative 16, that's where the vertex is, and then it goes up for forever. It has a minimum value, and that's y equals negative 16, that's at the vertex, that's the smallest value. And it happens at, when it says where, at x equals 1. That's because that's the other part of the vertex. So the minimum value is the y part of the vertex, but the where is the x part of the vertex.